Hello, uh, Mark here, um, otherwise known as Mac Hatter on the Night Cafe website or Sound Magus in the Night Cafe Discord. I thought we'd make some videos showing you how to use the basic functions of the Night Cafe AI artwork generator. The reasons behind this is because there isn't really much um, for complete beginners and it can be quite frustrating if you go in and you try to make something but for whatever reason you don't know what everything does and you know you end up with a black or a white blotch and you get quite upset by that and you just kind of give up. So I thought I would do the basics because that's really all I know. I'm not an advanced or an intermediate user. I've been doing this for about four weeks, probably done about 1400 creations though, um, because I have been kind of practicing trying to figure out what's what, but I'm still terrible. Um, we will go over the basics. I'll try and make four or five videos. I don't, I don't want the videos to be any longer than 15 minutes. Um, and we'll take it from there and hopefully I'll be able to show you um, how to use this wonderful tool and get some awesome results. So I do everything browser-wise. I'm, um, I'm on a PC at the moment. That's the address for the um, application. I'll give you a quick overview of what the application is. So this is the kind of main window and I'm on the My Creation section at the moment and that's where you can see some of the stuff I've done. And that's where you would see everything that you've done. Yeah, the My Feed section is these are people that I follow and like. Oh, that's cool. And so I can just go on and see what they're up to. That's nice. And I can also explore um, everything that's being generated. And there's a couple of filters here, stuff in the last hour, blah, blah, blah. And you can add filters. So text to image, style transfer, whatever. Um, that's wonderful. I'm going to follow him and like that. Very nice. Um, you have the create section, which is what you click on to create. Um, you've got this section here. If you click on that, it will take you to the Night Cafe. Um, it will take you to the Night Cafe Discord. I've got no idea why it done that. Um, if you're on a mobile phone, you've got Discord as an application. You can use an application on the desktop machines as well. I just prefer to do it like this because I can't be bothered opening additional stuff. Um, so this is the Discord. There's rooms in here where, you know, for everything that you can think of. I don't think I've ever waited longer than five minutes to get an answer to one of my questions. The guys in there are extremely helpful um, and they will help you figure stuff out. They'll even do stuff for you just to show you how it works. This little section here is where you get your little notifications. Um, whatever they may be, your credits or whatever. Um, this is where you see your profile stuff, how many credits you've got and whatnot. So credits are the currency of Night Cafe. Basically for every creation you create, it will cost you credits. You can buy credits, as you can see here, um, and you can earn credits. So you share a creation on social media, you'll get three credits. Um, publish 500 creations, you'll get 30 credits and get 50 likes, you'll get 10 credits. And you kind of know where you are when you go to your profile and you can see, you know, you get a badge and stuff and you get all your details up here. Um, if you create a picture, you can go, so Instagram and Twitter is where you would share. You just go in and share the picture normally, but you have to use, an Instagram it has to be at Knife, Night, Night Cafe Studio to get the credits. And in Twitter, I think you have to do that as well and um, have the actual link to the artwork, I believe. So you would have to have that in the tweet or at least a link back to creator.nightcafe.studio, I believe, but I'm not 100% certain because I just share to Instagram and Instagram shares it out to Twitter and stuff for me. So um, so that's normally the way I do it. So that's the basics. 
Um, to create a piece of art, you simply hit create and you'll get these two. We're not going to look at style transfer at the moment. I'll do that in a future video. Basically what this is, upload a picture, apply a style to it, Bob's your uncle. That's it. We're going to be concentrating on text to image. Now, text to image is basically you create a prompt, you then tell the AI what you want to do with it, and it creates a picture for you. When you first open it up, it'll look like this. Click up here to show the advanced options, um, because you will use them. You don't need to use them, but as you continue, the advanced options are pretty much a must. So, a prompt. What's a prompt? A prompt can be anything. Um, so the large mountain giraffe. Okay, so that's a prompt. What then happens is the prompt gets set, sent to one of these algorithms, which is the AI. So you've got artistic, which is the VQ GAN and clip. Don't ask me to explain the technicalities of this because I just won't and can't do it. The guys in the Discord will love to explain this to you. Um, so you've got these two, you've got the artistic and the coherent. The way I look at it is artistic gives you these crazy textures. No matter what you do, you will always get a result. Um, and they can be unbelievably detailed and crazy. And um, uh, as it says there, it's great at creating artistic textures based on the modifiers. So you can, I'll explain that in a minute but it may move away very far from the subject matter. So I may have put that in there. I might get a bit of a mountain and, you know, there might be a bit of a giraffe's neck or whatever, um, but I'll still get a result, but it might be very far from that. Whereas coherent will be closer to this. However, coherent tends to need a starting image. Now I say tends, it doesn't require one, but a lot of the time, if you don't use one in coherent, the results aren't very good. Um, that's not to say, you know, they're useless because they're not, but it's something to experiment with. But the coherent results tend to be closer to the subject matter. So you've got your, your text prop, prompt in there. You've chosen what algorithm you want to use. You've put a start image. By the way, you can use a start image with artistic as well. But what a lot of people do, including myself, is put a text prompt in. I'll then use the artistic algorithm to create me an image, which I will then use as the start image for coherent. Not all the time, but I like to experiment that way. Um, now we can come down here. You can choose one of these um, aspect ratios in artistic, but when you're in coherent, oh no, you can do it in coherent unless you add a start image. Once a start image is added, you can't choose an aspect ratio, I believe. <clears throat> Let me just check. Yeah, see how they're all greyed out. So um, with a start image, you can't do that. Um, over here, we've got a thing called seeds. Again, there's a lot of technical stuff behind this. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It goes from zero up to, I don't know how many fours. It's not that many. It may be eight. I can't remember. Um, basically, it's a random number that affects the way the AI um, draws the art. Um, you know, you can have one in there and then use exactly the same processes in the next one and change it to two and it'll be different. So again, experiment, experiment, experiment. Um, the overall prompt weight, so this is just how much you want the final image to match the prompt. Um, again, experimentation. You've got an accuracy boost here that works particularly, it only works with coherent, I believe. Yet, yeah, as you can see, it's not there in artistic. And it just makes the coherent option a bit more accurate. Um, you can use it or not use it, it does cost you two credits. So without it, your credit will be one, add it on, it will be two. Um, that's just if you do that. Then you've got some resolution and runtime options. Um, here, the runtime options can be put up to 1200 iterations. Oh no, in this instance, it's only a thousand. Maybe in artistic, it's 1200. Yeah, in artistic, it's 1200. Um, basically, how many times it draws the art over and over and over again. Um, but it does cost you. So if I was to put that up there and put that there, that's going to cost me 30 credits 
for this artwork. So again, be aware of your credit. Um, usage. Normally I do a one credit artistic and then move on to my coherent stuff and start to adapt then. And I can go artistic, coherent, I can go back and forth loads of times just to try and get closer to what I'm actually after. So that's it basically apart from the modifiers. Modifiers are um, some descriptive words that describe certain things. So we've got things like volumetric lighting, so different types of lighting. We've got artists in here. We've got H.R. Geiger. We've got uh, Thomas Kincaid and Jim Burns. Um, we've got different styles of art. So abstract, you know, hyper-realism. Um, Picasso's in here. Um, pixel art's in here. And then you've got like the game engines, Unreal Engine, V-Ray, um, I think there's another one in there somewhere. You've also got the art websites, DeviantArt, um, Trending on Art Station. These all affect the prompts in a multitude of different ways. And you're not limited to these. You can put your own stuff in here. Um, and you can have as many prompts as you like. Now, there's reasons why you would use multiple prompts over one line. Again, I'll get to that in a later video. Um, or I, I might even not get to that. You can ask in Discord, you know, um, those guys will explain it to you. I'll probably make a video, but if I forget, just ask. But um, that's basically it. Uh, so that's what you need to be aware of um, to create your first artwork. And to do that, you come into this um, create button and put the details in here. Now, um, I'm going to stop this video now and I'm going to create another one and we'll get to creating something. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.